is Girl Stop Playing, a weekly show that empowers black women to stop playing with their potential so they can live a life that they love. I'm Coriel, your favorite homegirl, and I'm on a mission to help black women make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you're willing to work. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I'm bringing you the information and the conversations to help you make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today we have three working women in the building. We have some of the amazing cast of the First Ladies of Freight joining us on the couch. So ladies, go ahead and introduce yourselves. We're going to start with the boss babe right here. Casey Cooper is not, I'm the giving creator. you own introduction. Casey Cooper is no stranger to Girl Stop Playing. If you have not seen her first episode, definitely go check it out. But tell the people what they need to know about Casey Cooper. Casey so, Cooper. I'm Casey Cooper. My platform is called The Compass Circle. Mm -hmm. And over the last 18 years, of course, I've been in trucking, for those that don't know that. But I decided to um, start a TV show. A lot of producers and networks were coming to me about being on the show. With my background, I was like, oh, no, nah, we're going to partner. And so I brought them a show. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get into that later. Yes, but anyway, um, I brought some ladies along. So I have here Miss, who I want to go do first? <laughs> Miss, in order of seniority, I'll do uh, mm -hmm. Michelle Voy. Um, her company is Prestige Screening, and Michelle does all our drug testing for our owner operators. Gotcha. And then we also have Mrs. Chloe Silligan. She does all our dispatching. And then we also have Shanti Hoffman, the Hoffmans, they do trucking, and Tiana White, which they know her as Pretty Pockets. She's also a part of the cast, too. So two of them could not be here. Got you. So y'all are already familiar. Chloe is a new face. We are super excited to see you on some upcoming episodes. If y'all have not caught, um, First Ladies of Freight, it's available on our Roku as well as YouTube. New episodes drop every single Tuesday, and it's been a little spicy mm -hmm. so far. So I'm like, what level of spice do I want to start with? Right. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's ease our way into the okay. spice. Okay. What was the vision <laughs> of First Ladies of Freight? So you said that people were coming to you, approaching you because you've made a name for yourself in the trucking industry. What were they approaching you with? Like, what was their conversation? Um, we like what you're doing. We like your content. We want to make a show about you and just pretty much delve in deeper into what we see on social media. Gotcha. You know, of course, they want to see your lifestyle, what type of trucking you do, because I think for me doing like heavy hauling government projects, that's a different side than what you normally hear mm -hmm. about. So, of course, that um, family life, of course, it's pretty much they'll come to you also and they know like what you got going on, but then they'll say, well, what else do you have going on? So they'll kind of assess what they want to, you know. So how far in the process did you get with these companies? Oh, wow. It can be like years worth of process. Oh, I mean, a year and a half. Did you like tape for them? Like you taped, um, what is it called? The sizzle? Yeah, you did all of that? So funny story, yeah, I did. I, so I produced my own sizzle. Mm -hmm. So when they came to me, they were like, and this is like the largest production company in the world. Um, they came and, you know, they produced the Kardashians. So of course I'm like, oh wow, this is like, for reality TV, there's no higher than, mm -hmm. well now there is. This first is great. That okay. part, that part. Please. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they came to me and they were like, you know, we want to do a show about you. And I'm like, okay, what does that entail? So they told me, I said, no, I'll give you a sizzle. So I'll go shoot it, I'll cast it. What made you say no? Because I know when people come to you and they give you the ball in the bat, they're gonna tax you for that. And so I already knew. So I'll just say this. Bethany Frankel is a housewife in New York, if y'all don't know. Mm -hmm. And they give her a lot of praise and accolades because all she did was just do smart business. I mean, I guess back then maybe it was forward thinking. But for me, it was never going to be. Well, you know, Amarosa said, you know, all the white girl got to do is just show yeah. up and look cute. And she gets all of the praise. Right. But the black woman has to work know, a little harder. Work yeah. a little bit harder. Spend a little more money. But anyways, um, yeah, so that's all I did. I, I brought them the show. And we casted it, shot it in about four different states in three weeks. Mm -hmm. I took them to the show. They started shopping the show all around Hollywood without my permission. And then they were like, oh, well, we don't want to partner because, you know, we, we only work with the best. So they were using my stuff all around Hollywood. But when it came time to us to partner, oh, my stuff ain't good enough. And when you say partner, you want it to be the producer like of the show. Like co-produce the show with Got you. Right. Because for people who are not entrepreneurs, a lot of my audience is, but some of them are. Explain the importance of protecting yourself by partnering versus just showing up to their party. Oh, for sure. Well, I'll speak 
in this regard, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of people have platforms. We we see that, right? And so production companies are looking for shows. They're looking for people they of interest. Content. They need content. So they take it. They, you know, they'll do a sizzle or whatever, or even just a, a pitch deck, an idea for the show. Pitch it to a network, and depending on what that looks like, they'll say, well, we need a sizzle. Or we need a little more. Or they'll get on the phone with the cast and just kind of assess everybody's characteristics and mm-hmm. how they are. Um, in this particular situation, I gave them the show. And you can spend $100,000 easy making a sizzle. So With I, no guarantee. With no guarantee. Right. With no contract, with no... With nothing. With nothing. So I'm like, let me spend my own money because at least it won't be theirs. Thinking that, okay, it's obviously nice enough because y'all are shopping it. But when it came down to that coin... They wanted to use my product, didn't want to pay me for it. So, you they know. They wanted you to be the talent? They wanted me to be talent and producer. And they were, you know, they, for, I will say for entry, like, you never done reality before, they were offering me a, a nice little penny if I wasn't me, but. <laughs> they were offering someone a nice someone little a penny, nice but penny. It, wasn't me. it wasn't enough. Yeah, they wanted to offer me, like, $100,000, and you was going to make $4 million? That wasn't going to work. But for so many people out there, who is sitting on a thousand dollars in a bank, or oh, not even maybe? Yeah. Seeing that carrot, that carrot dangling of a hundred k, they would take it in a heartbeat. And, and so many people end up in bad deals. They do, and I will say this. And now I get it why people are saying about selling your soul. It's really your name, your image, and your likeness. Mm-hmm. That's all you have. So I mean, I, this is an nil deal. For have me. you seen the clip of Terrence Howard? No. Talking about the fact that whatever company did hustle and flow. Oh, he Game. only made twelve thousand. He yeah. made twelve thousand dollars, but the way that they did him, the way you know how how he ended up making twelve thousand dollars, they gave the credit, the singing credits for all of the songs he did in the show. They gave the credits to the character in the show instead of Terrence Howard. Oh, wow! See, so oh. DJ got the credits. Oh, wow! There is no DJ. DJ right. is a, fi- See, a they pulled a flip flam. They they pulled it, and so I want to. I I only put a pin there for people out here who get so. Hyped like up. hyped yeah. up by these shiny objects, and it's like there's always something that Man, comes the along some with and it. And this too, now they're like, you have this platform, and we gave you this platform, so whatever you get, I we need a get piece a, of it. There are people who are locked into lifetime deals, so no matter what they get as mm-hmm. a result, you have to, um, you know, give a piece of that up. Now for me, I'm already selling products. You come on, Chloe, we don't, so we don't got some money together. So like, I wasn't about to give what I'm already making all future rights. No, I, w- I wasn't doing it. So yeah, it's, it's you know, it's it was a lot. it was a. I mean, I can't say that because, I mean, I feel like you learn in anything, right? Yeah. And really, if I'm being honest, we've been doing this now for about two and a half years. So I definitely feel like whatever is next for me is like, that's that's it. This is that's preparing you yeah, that's, for... It's going to be what I want. It can't be nothing less because I'm already here, so... We could just really just... I'm going to go. I'm going to move on. We're going to drop, drop <laughs> the mic so right there. there. <laughs> so, Michelle... How did you get into your space? Because I don't. this is not where you started. But how how did you get into owning a lab? No, it's not where I started. So my background is actually corporate technology. I'm a global technology leader, project management. Think about paying the people and paying the bills. So applying from applying from a job to like getting your benefits and all of those types of things. I ran those types of projects. Got gotcha. you. But <clears throat> in 2016, um, I got a phone call. And somebody said um, there was a shooting at the basketball court and they haven't, you know, formally said who it is, but they think it's DJ. Well, they said DeMond. My son, DJ, is a junior, DeMond Jr. And so I'm thinking it's not DJ, right? Like, for real. I'm cooking. I just got out of a meeting, you know. And... She called back, it was DJ's son, and she said that they had confirmed that it was DJ. And so at this point, I'm thinking, well, it, then he probably got shot in the arm. You know, I'm literally visualizing myself, like, I'm going to go see him in the hospital. You know, maybe he's going to get his life right, which he was not. DJ was one of the most mild-mannered kids ever, young man ever. But get his life right, meaning like, okay, maybe you're going to go to a technical school or, you know, do some things like that. He died. He was shot in the back of the head. And then there were all these stories, like, swarming. Like, so as a mom, I'm thinking that he was in distress, you know, like, that he was sitting, they say he was sitting by the pool, and you know. So then you just start, it just starts to be like, your child was somewhere and you could not protect them, and you were not. I was there when you took your first breath. I was not there when you took your last. Mm. And so... um, 
fast forward, the first thing that I did was I started a foundation called the Breakthrough Foundation. Like I did that probably a, mo- a month afterwards. And the Breakthrough Foundation, and people can follow us on Facebook. And we really just wanted to give money to kids to show them, like move them from their potential into their purpose, right? Because DJ was not a bad kid. Like there were so many things that like came out as a result of his case. And I'm like, child, who, where? DJ? The one that if it's a fire drill, he going to burn up in the fire because he don't even move that fast like that. <laughs> and um, so we started giving money to kids. That was the first thing that we did. Fast forward, you know, grief became a lot, you know, because similar to what you were talking about, I experienced those things, but on the corporate side. People will pay you $100 an hour just to sit in the corner, you know, which is very demeaning to somebody who has $200,000 in student loans sitting on a private degree and international business and all those things. So it's like they will give you the money, but they want you to be quiet. Right. So I had I was fed up. I was on this project um, and I was like, I literally was I just I woke up every day feeling like I don't know if y'all have ever seen like um, like when they were getting ready to sentence the boys in DJ case. All I saw were like these guys with, you know, army green on you know, army green on and a whole bunch of artillery on the chest. And I was like, oh, my God, who is that? Well, when they get ready to read the verdict, they I mean, it's literally here, 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 here. Everybody hand on their gun in case anybody want to act crazy. That's how I felt every day. Like I had all this artillery on me and I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I cannot keep I can't be the grieving mom, be a new wife, Mm -hmm. have a blended family and show up for these crazy folks every day. So I went to get a drug screen. So I left that job and I'm going to another one and it's a contract job. And I went to get a drug screen and I'm going to say the room probably was as big as this, but it was so linear. It was like I could see clear through everything. And God said, ask him how did he get started? And I'm like, well, I don't really want to. And he was like, ask him how he gets started. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so I said, you know, excuse me, like, how, you like, how did you have to have a medical degree? Blah, 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 blah. And he was just like, you know, talk to my wife. Well, the wife didn't want to help me, child. Oh. I mean, like, I couldn't even pay her. Like, I couldn't pay sis to help me. She was like, girl, why would I help you? You would be my competition. I said, girl, I'm not even going to be on this side of town. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I knew that I could leverage my technology and corporate experience from HR. Like, I could make this work, not only help people get to get jobs, but also help people in the community having come from alcoholism. And so so it was like, just like, literally it all flashed before. God was like, boom, you're going to help the community. Boom, you're going to help people in workforce. Boom, you're going to, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I just literally was on Google and YouTube University. No lie. So I opened up an occupational health center in College Park. And about a year and a half into that, Candace Holyfield Parker, six figures. Hey, boo. Yes. Hey, Candace. Came in the door and she was like, this is so dope. You know, can you teach this to my spa community, which is comprised of a lot of nurses? So everything was just organic. And when I look back over my life and think things over, my corporate experience was in healthcare and higher ed. And that's all I really do now, right? It's higher. I teach people, and it's in the healthcare space and and consulting, and so um, that's really how I got here. Wow! So full circle because it all not really full circle, but it all comes together to make sense. All of the pieces, all of the experiences, all of your expertise. Now you're able to leverage it as an entrepreneur, have that freedom, but still serve the community. I cannot. As a mother of, just as a mother, but as a mother of two boys, I'm not even going to use my brain to try to imagine that, right? But for a mother out there who can hear you say that, and you, I wasn't going to interrupt because you were flowing, but I really want to know how did you, like, wake up the next day and get out of bed? Like, Like, what did you have to tell yourself? Because I, for the life of me, cannot imagine me living another day and my child is not. Like, I, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. So how, how did you do that? I didn't. Mm. I slept in the closet. I slept in, I literally, I had, I had, we, my husband and I, we had his in her closet. So I had my own closet and it was one where, you know, you can spend a little time in there and I slept on the floor in the closet mm. and I would, I would just be like, DJ, where are you? And that's what I would say every day. DJ, where are you? 
you know, and it was highly publicized because it was in broad daylight and it was on the right side of town. And so his case got a lot of attention, um, you know, in the natural because of that, but in the spiritual, it was God. And I, and that the thing that really got me through is just the fact that, what can I say? God, God had his hand throughout. The boys were arrested. They were sentenced. The detectives, they didn't judge DJ for the circumstances. The the um, officer said, she said, as soon as she saw DJ face, she knew he was a good guy. And so I once I made it back to my bed, I would literally wake up every day crying. Because it so would I just have to live this yeah, reality. I would again. wake up every day crying because it's like, oh my God, you're reliving it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I tell people this, and this is the truth. I don't I'm not one of them. I live between heaven and earth. If I really sit up there and think about like my son is gone, like my breath will leave my body. Like I can't, I can't, I have to literally kind of go do you, between do, do you the feel two. like you have to compartmentalize, like I can't. I Girl, got, no. This is who I am today. I have to show up and Baby, do this, and no. I don't have Look, time that's why I don't like to be telling these stories because then it's yeah, real though. It's, yeah. but, and someone I mean, we, out there, we both have. We everybody has kids. You know yeah. what I mean? That, that's crazy. And someone yeah. out there could. The only reason why I feel like God always leads me to because this is not where I was going today. Okay, right, but right. why I feel like it always leads to these tough conversations because someone out there is going to experience something similar, and mm. when they're going through it, if they've never heard anybody talking about it, if they've never seen anybody who's looking like this today day that has come through it right then when they go through it they feel like it's gonna break them so you are literally inspiring someone who doesn't even know they need inspiration right right now it can't and and it can and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that it can't break somebody because it definitely can and you have there are so many cycles of grief you know and so it's you know, a lot of times I'm crying. People just don't know I'm crying. Yeah. They don't see the tears. Like I, I could, li- I mean, every day I could literally be crying, but nobody knows that I'm crying. You know, I have so many coping mechanisms. Do you understand what I'm saying? So many vices, not bad, but like one year at Christmas time, I was like, I'm gonna watch every Christmas movie. Y'all better leave me the book alone. Like nobody, I you just manage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was like, the just wanted to watch Christmas I was, movie. I, I get was it. Like, I was like. Don't, don't, like, don't. But at the same time, I can't, I also can't use that as a crutch. So it's like we also have to, like, sit in our pain. And so the long story short is I would just say to any mom, God forbid, because, baby, when you're 17 years old and you think that you being bold by giving birth when abortion was on the table, when adoption was on the table, when giving him to a family member was on the table, and you said, "Oh no, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna woman up." Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you are, you are high school dropout. You yeah. literally are in the ninth grade, but you really are like an eleventh grader. And you say, "I'm gonna get myself together." You literally go to school with Andre from Outcast, and you say, "Okay, Andre, this ain't your baby," but still. <laughs> and and it's just like you, and somebody comes. And they put your whole life in the trash. So a lot of times as mothers, we find our identity in our kids. Mm. So it was like, okay, well, what was I doing? I, I always t- I say, listen, I could have been, I could have been a, I could have been a stripper or a um, crackhead. I don't have myself together for my kids. Yeah. And somebody clearly like made a decision over what they say is 40 bands, which ain't now one of y'all ninjas got now because you had to pay your sorry eight attorneys. So now we all lost. Your your people in the bathroom crying, talking about God got a plan. Yes, let's go ahead and let's get these convictions and these sentences. Because that's the plan God's right plan. now. Yeah. That's the plan right now. So everybody loses. And then you're looking and you're thinking like, the reporter's like, well, if DJ was here, where I'm like, DJ, like you were so loved. You well, di- you, you had a hundred and two dollars and fifty cent and a pack of freaking Newports in your pocket when your mama made a hundred dollars an hour and could have given you, but somehow along the way we got so distant that you didn't feel like. So it's just so many things. So I would just say. Like, do whatever works for you in the moment. Be patient with yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive them. Forgive all the crazy people who want to make another obituary because they name one in it. And 
the, the people trauma. who float the videos around on the, the the casket pictures and it ain't even supposed to be no like you you have you have to just it's an iterative process and just know just give God the glory and walk in your purpose because I feel like me and DJ have a great relationship now oh. I feel like we are at peace you you understand what I'm saying yeah. so all that other stuff it just washed away and he shows up all the time and all the things and so my mission is really just to run it and until I lay eyes on my child again. I love it. And, and and that's, you know, that's what I would say. But it's not, I think, I would just add, like, don't play when they say don't play about yourself. Don't play about your kids. Do not play about your kids because they can get away from you really fast even when you're doing all of the quote-unquote right things. Mm -hmm. Don't play about your kids. That's a word right there. You know? Yeah. So, Chloe, you're a mom, too. You mentioned. I am. Yes, she That's why is. Baby, she's pulling toe up over here, That's baby. my yeah, boo. She is toe up from the flow up, baby. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Chloe. Tell us who you are and then tell us about your babies. How that many was, you got? That was great. That was deep. I needed that. My name is Chloe. High-end Chloe. You know, my whole brand is high-end. Um, I DBA a lot of my other brands, you know. <laughs> I teach that in business. But anyways, high-end Chloe, high-end logistics. And, um, yeah, I'm a mother. And it's just so important to be around women who who really know what motherhood is like, you know, real mothers. And like she said, it doesn't matter, like, what people say what a good mom is because I, I know I'm a great mother. But, like, I'm an entrepreneur, so that's why I was, like, getting emotional because, like, I know what it feels like to do everything you need to do for your kids. And I don't know what I would do if I didn't have them. Like, that's I don't the, know that. That's the part of motherhood that is, you could, you can't predict anything. You can't so, control anything. No. You can't. It's a strength for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sitting next to wise women, I'm very thankful for that. And I have to ask God, like, why is this happening? Something is happening. <laughs> By all means, like. Something is happening. Because for, for those of y'all who have seen First Ladies Afraid, I know y'all are like, wait a minute, Chloe who? So Chloe <laughs> is new. Chloe <laughs> falls nice to the crew. Chloe's new to the crew. She will be joining in a couple of episodes. Okay, so make sure y'all check it out. But Chloe, what do you do in the transportation space? Um, so I'm in logistics. What does that mean for the people who are totally confused? So I'm for the girls who, you know, are the struggling moms or maybe just somebody who wants to get into trucking that doesn't have a lot of funds. Like, that's how I started. And using your phone or any type of Wi-Fi device, could be computer, iPad, whatever it is. Oh, and, uh, yeah, whatever it is. And, you know, booking loads. I call myself a logistics manager, mm -hmm. meaning for people that are, um, you know, entrepreneurs that are, you know, the owners of the trucks, you know, or whatever you're dealing with. I'm the girl that's going to make sure your load is getting there on time. I'm managing everything, which I, I believe that my position is very important because if the freight is not getting there. What are we doing? What are we doing? So you would be, put this in the layman's terms. Layman's maybe. terms. You're the middleman between the driver and the companies. Yes. I'm making the sure the driver has the load yeah. and the load makes it She's to the company. Batching. Yeah. Yep. And I also call myself the plug because I find a lot of lanes that people didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. You know, designated lanes, oil filled lanes, um, with Casey, you know. So y'all are really the, the plugs up here. Y'all are really no, plugging people yeah. because I don't know if you mentioned it, but on the show you talked about how you've trained thousands of people yeah. to open labs and do what you do, which is one thing that I just gotta say. I love that we don't only learn new information, but we come back and we spread it. Now we don't get paid for, for teaching y'all, but we we don't hoard it though. We no, don't no. feel like gatekeepers. To your no point, gatekeeping. with the lady at the lab, like if I help you, I'm gonna lose something. Yeah. I don't associate with people like that. Yeah. I feel like that just <laughs> hinders you. That limiting mindset, those you know that those limiting beliefs. I think that's just gonna stop you. And I'm sure your lab is outperforming whatever little thing they right. got going on over there now. I think if, I always say if she knew. How much money I have made from helping people, she might have changed. Her or mind. how how just what y'all could have done together. You just never yeah. know. You could literally block your blessings because you're out here being a hater. But oh. all of y'all teach other people what you know, which is mm. the beautiful thing. And I think it's just a woman thing. Like yeah. we are we're gonna go out and get it and then we're gonna come back and make sure you got it too. Yes. So for each of you, what would you say is like the biggest misconception or one thing that you did not know when you started doing what you're doing? So Whew. 
what is something if if a woman out there is interested in getting into trucking? You've had to be behind the wheel. Man. You've done. You do heavy hauls. You do Man. all of the things. What's something that you wish somebody would have told you? I think for me, when I was coming up, right, I was operational on the in the field on the truck, all that. And I wanted to get to the next step, right? For me, I thought that meant having an office space and this big building and all these windows and all these floors and all these people. When in reality, once I took a step back and I started subbing out my work and I got rid of all my trucks anyways, that's when I started making more money because I think as black people, we see, if, if you saw your parents working, uh, having a business, you saw them working in the business, mm -hmm. it's very rare that I hear people say, oh, my family had a cleaning business and y'all won't clean it. Like, mm -hmm. so we weren't taught, like, and that's my government contract background, we weren't taught to go do the work. Like in government contracts, you send somebody to do the work and you get paid for it. So I think for me, that's a, a big misconception. It's just, you don't have to run and go do the work. You can work smarter and not harder. And All I think day. we talked about this on our, on the last interview. It's like most, I don't know if it's only black people, but I always tell you, I only know black people. So what I know from black people is we are going to go, usually the entry level, like we're going we're gonna to be sweeping the flows, trying to get in the building. And we never know the other ways that other people right. are doing things. So, Contracts can be a way to build generational wealth. That's the way I think you said it's basically like being a project manager. You get Absolutely. this contract and then you find people who can make it do what it do. But I also took that with the show. I took the same mindset. It's like you're not about to take anything from me and I'm going to put you in charge of it because then you're going to give me less. Mm -hmm. So I go into any situation like I'm never going to be the tail. I'm going to be the head, which means I'm going to determine what I make you're not going to determine what I mean. It's going to be my bat, my ball. If it ain't both, it's going to be one. I'm going to come team because you're going to bring yeah, your crew Yeah, I'm going to have you. some leverage in anything I do. Like, I'll never go into another situation again without any leverage whatsoever. So, for me, it's just, that would be... Work smart, not hard. You don't have to get behind the wheel. You don't have to get behind and the wheel. And you don't have to buy a truck. And you don't have to buy a truck. Mm -hmm. What about getting into dispatching? Man... Honestly, this is for the girls who are struggling. This is for the girls who can't afford to go to nursing school. I was in nursing school. That's how I got. I was just like, oh, my God, I was overwhelmed. I was like, I had my LVN license. Mm -hmm. I was like about to be R. And I was like, I'm not doing this shit anymore. This is ridiculous. Like, I'm just like, this is just not my calling. So <laughs> I had a cell phone. For the girls, everybody pays their phone bill, right? I this don't care true. if it's a cricket. Not if a it cricket. gets the Wi-Fi. If it got Wi-Fi. What what is that? I don't even Girl, know what is that. It's something out there or uh, the Obama phone? Not yeah. the Obama. No, not the Obama phone. I'm just oh, giving okay. options. I know people that have the Obama phone Metro, they get Wi-Fi. Yes, gotcha. And Metro. they can be a dispatcher. The, the point is, the point if is, you if can you get a wi signal, baby. If you, you can, can get, a get a signal, you can signal. dispatch. Because listen, a lot of like you said, you know black people who are in business. But guess what? I found my way by talking to my black people. I ain't going to hold you. Mm -hmm. I never really knew that until you said that. I was like, wait, I did find my way that way. I was in the hair shop. I was like, girl, I'm about to get in the dispatch. And she goes, I got a nigga who got five trucks. And I I got a man who has five trucks. And you're fine. <laughs> oh, okay, if you want to edit that. I have a man who has five trucks. <laughs> and um, when she called him, I got on the phone with him. I was like, look, I haven't dispatched for it, but I know it, the system. I know how to do it. I can talk anybody out they draws. Like, stop playing with me. Wait, what? I know how to talk. Like, if you know how to talk, <laughs> let me tell you who can dispatch. Any woman who can manage their children, any mother, any anybody, any man, anybody that knows their worth or knows how to get somebody something better. Everybody's trying to get a deal. If you know how to get a deal, you can dispatch. You can be in the stock market at that. It's the mm. entry level. But it's like, hey, we need at least $4 a mile, okay? <laughs> right. If it's not that, click. So you don't and need a specialized skill no, set. No, you just need to deal with somebody. And again, it's not about, you just need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. Or get on the internet, talk to Uncle Google, like she says. Talk, Get on the YouTube, YouTube University. And then get you, um, you know, a membership with the DAT you know, the board or whatever, it's like And are you teaching all this? Do you have classes? Yes, I do. Okay. So yeah. we'll make sure we put your info below so the yeah. people can My come. My class is a little Find different him. because I don't hold people accountable. To, see, I don't like people who retain information and keep it. Girl, what you so, want to do with it? Oh, no, I put them on board. I give them an opportunity. Oh, they you become, put, you they make work the, with you. You, you don't want them to hold it. You don't want them to hold it. Because got I'm you. not going to hire VAs to do my dispatching. Well, I do. But I, my VAs train the people who take my courses to learn how to do it. You're giving them applied. Yeah, I give them because I'm not, I'm beyond that. I don't like book loads every day. That's insane. I've surpassed that. I love it. So, Sheila, tell us about getting into a lab. Who, who is the, like, 
I love how she said basically anybody can get into it. You got Wi-Fi? Come on, I can teach you. Is the lab business the same way? And I'm asking y'all this because there's so many people out there watching that are yeah. discounting what they have, that they're not ready, they're not in position, they're not smart enough, they don't know enough people, and I would just want them to see that you probably already have more than you think to get started. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to answer it real quick in three pieces. <laughs> so I'm going to piggyback off what Casey said in terms of being the head and not the tail. So with drug testing and clinical lab, I mean, you may term it patient service center, occupational health. It could literally be a, a practice that you have. Chiropractors can even, you know, have a position with this because they can do DOT physicals and they may want to add drug screens. But how you lead, how you are the head and not the tail in this overall healthcare and transportation medical space is you go after government contracts. Mm -hmm. You go after supplier diversity you know, type relationships, right? So you can actually do those same things mm. with drug testing and clinical lab all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Piggybacking off what Chloe said, when Candace came to me, I was so excited to share this information with people because I, I'm a girl from the projects. I'm from College Park, Georgia, right? And I wanted people to know, like when I was growing up, black people didn't have cars. My grandma paid $3 for somebody to take her to the grocery store. Black people didn't really live in homes. They lived in the projects, mm -hmm. okay? Black people didn't go to school too tough, not the black people that I knew. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, people are going to see they don't got to sell drugs because let's keep it real. <laughs> Drug dealers ain't really making the money like they used to make. It ain't like it used and to be. It's the same. The risk they, is the same, but the reward <laughs> is not. It's out right? there too much. On average. And so I was like, man. And, and because keep in mind, I had no formal medical training and I was able to do this. So I'm like, well, I'm like, anybody can do this. <laughs> but that, in doing that, I compromised my business. Okay. Right? I compromised my business because I didn't set it up to protect the, ca the intellectual capital, right? Mm -hmm. And there are client scammers out there who will take advantage of you. Are there. So right. what that caused me to do was it caused me to innovate so I went from a $99 class to my average client cart with me is $25,000 because we're no longer teaching drug testing and teaching clinical lab. First of all, we are the originators of it. So if you don't see it somewhere, trust and believe this is where it, it came from, from a social selling space. Because remember, old girl didn't want to help me. Nobody was doing this in the social selling space except me. Mm -hmm. She said put some respect on her name. Right, please, okay. please. And um, But that being said, so I'm like, okay, so my answer to the question about, like, whether I didn't know, I think I wasn't, I know there's levels to things, but it's the growth, your growth as a business owner, going from a business owner to a CEO, to a CEO of a certain type of company, it's that, it's that mind, it's the vast mindset shift that really was like intriguing for me. Mm -hmm. And then as you were talking about like being a mom and like how do you balance all things? How you show up for your husband? How you yeah. show up for your friends? How you show up, you know, how do you like do all those things? Like that's the whole thing. It's not just go start a business. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you gonna go, go big. And I would say leverage what you have, like use what you have from, you know, where you are. Mm -hmm. And understand that you have to elevate yourself. It's it's not a one and done. I'm always thinking like, like y'all take no. We gonna be sitting at the billion dollar round table. Come on, round table. I'm already sitting there. I don't know. Hello. What okay, well that's what? fine. But <laughs> I'm okay. already, What are you talking about? So I'm just saying from that standpoint, like that's how we need to think. This is not just the old days, and nothing was wrong with Uncle who had a fruit truck. Or a fruit stand. Well, nothing wrong with that. That's respectable work. But, but we, we don't, don't have to do that no more. But we don't yeah. have to do that. We can work smarter. We can work harder. And we can live our full lives. Yeah. And, and I think and that enjoy was enjoy the, the fruits and of, enjoy. Of, of the fruit truck. Because exactly. Uncle didn't get to enjoy none of the fruit. No, no. You'd be truck. surprised how much money them fruit trucks be making. They, they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but, what, but what is the lifestyle? No, exactly. and I, I, get it. I think, too. And less, I, don't, I, less, I binge watch. I binge watch the whole. Less All of the episodes. So I don't did? know what episode this was this was on. Um, but y'all were y'all were talking about what was it? Y'all were talking about basically not being able to enjoy what it is that y'all are building. Like y'all are putting, I think it was um Tiana 
So let's let's get around to Tiana. Tiana was talking about the fact that she has to sacrifice so much when she's on the road and away from her kids and just, again, coming back around to adding that element of being a mother onto all of the other things that we have going on. Um, where the hell is Tiana? <laughs> I'm well, sorry, I didn't have a segue. I'm sorry, coughing. I didn't have a segue. <laughs> that, was a yeah. that was a cough. That was a cough. Sorry, I didn't have a segue. <laughs> well. Wait, can we talk about where Tiana is? Can we talk about where Tiana is? Well, so Tiana is one of the cast members. Tiana, let's start with Shanti. Tiana and Shanti they could not make it. Right. Shanti, give a little background on Shanti in case they haven't seen it. Power so, couple, right? Shanti and her husband, power couple in California, um, multiple trucks. Uh, she also sells real estate. Just little Doing so, it big. She's four feet, whatever, but just <laughs> little firecracker. <laughs> little firecracker, like. uh, socialite, uh, can get you anything you want. Um, <laughs> just so little, but so big. Big, I mean, yeah. big energy. I was looking forward to meeting her. Good okay, person. and Tiana is uh, the fifth. Is she number five now? She, yeah. Chloe's technically the fifth, but okay. she would be the fourth. Four okay, five. but um, Tiana has a fleet also. She uh, drives, and that's where we kind of like are more similar, like getting on the she's road. Been behind, she's behind, she's behind the wheel. The wheel. Um, and that's where she is. Like She had about three trucks, I think, but she was operationally driving and managing her, her fleet and all of that booking her own loads and just, you know, very into it. So everybody's at different places and, you know, specifics and all that. But um, she's not here. Um, if you've been watching the show, Tiana was fighting a federal case. Um, and she did get found guilty. So she is going to be sentenced in about a little Next shy month. of... Yeah, a little... This sh- month. Yeah, a little <laughs> shy of uh, two weeks. And uh, our prayers are with her. Very much so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to get to see more of Tiana? Yeah, you're going to see. So we we had to shoot because also the nature of the show is like we were on a timetable with her because we have all this content. If she goes to jail and we don't finish out her story or put some kind of cap to it or whatever, we lose. But she went to jail. Did she went to jail, but I mean, we it? have, I mean, we have, you know, you have going to court need. with her and her um, posturing her kids and doing her final, uh, you know, just... Mm. Necessary, you know, steps like she needs getting, to take. Like to, doing the preparations. Yeah, so. like, you know, packing her house up and sending her, you know, doing what she got to do to get ready. So they'll get to see all that, too. So what would you say is your biggest, like, where do you see the First Ladies of Freight? Oh, man, listen, it's already done. Like, But where are we going to see it? I know it's in your head, but where are we going to see it? Like, everywhere. So right now I am having different, because it's my show. I'm me and Koi show, to, but I'm just saying like clear. I own the sh- we own the show. Like there is nobody that owns this. It's our show. So of course I want to have it in different places and you know do different licenses and all that kind of stuff. You can do that. Um, merch, of course. Board game, first lady spray. Board game is coming too. Because how dope would it, it be? Like life kind, like it's a like life. Yeah, style? you on the road and boom, two a.m. Your tire go out. Boom, mm. what you gonna do? You ain't you ain't hit the low yet, so you ain't got paid yet. It's like. You remember Oregon Trail in school? Girl, do I? Okay, yes, so I it's do. like present day Oregon Trail for drivers, though. I like, you got to make it across country. You got your chance cards, and something that happens. Is, that's going to be great for even just like high school kids. Oh, definitely. Period. Electronic version. I mean, all of that. Like, they should have never let me. They should have never fumbled the bag. They should have never let me get no money. Like, part of one thing that I do want to mention, part, and we talked about this off camera, that they wanted you to fill in like drama. I think that people don't, like, we know reality TV is not real, but I don't think people understand the level to which it's not real. And it's so punitive and so, like, they want it to be that way. Even we had several meetings. I mean, I've been around, just like I said, we've been doing this for two years, so I done had meetings with everybody. To hear some of those executives on the phone, to just hear the remarks about, okay, so somebody got to come for her then. Because, I mean, who's coming for her? And, well, we got to have y'all at odds with some man there. Are we going to have it so, like, they're coming out? I mean, it's just all these fights. And I have enough drama going on in business, just keeping everything together. I'm not going to... I don't need to pretend. Who's going to come up here and fight with somebody in a sequence? Romper, baby. I'm she not like, fighting. She's, <laughs> like, it's... We're not doing that. It's, yeah, you know, T- Tiana's in jail, and, you know, we're doing this, and I got to navigate that. So it's enough going on. Without adding yeah, on I fake, know. phony... Man. I just have to just give you your flowers for that Say, alone. Yes. Because the way that black women are running to embarrass themselves Man. is... 
for a very small check. For a very small check. And a very harsh contract. It's just... Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, we talk. they talk about, like, Mariah Huck with the whole Married to Medicine. Bringing them that show and then you don't have any... Girl. Once you give it up, it's gone, so... It's gone, and then, and now the rumor becomes whatever you did to, you know, get put out. You know, it's, you're not in control, you're not of, in control. The, of the narrative You're not anymore. in control. So I love that you are an example of... I'm not about to take this carrot. No. I'm going to maintain... I'm going to keep my integrity. Yeah. I'm going to keep my ownership. Um, and so I love that you are able to leverage this as an opportunity to bring other people on, putting other women in position, because you could have just said... I could have just said yes. The easy. compass circle is doing enough, and you are. Yeah. But I love that you just have the spirit of... Oh, I can't do that now. Baby. I got to I can't, I can't sell it now. Home. I can't. And if I do, it'll be for the right price. <laughs> that part. That part. Okay. That part. Okay, so I got to ask y'all my last question. Each of you, what would you say was your biggest girl stop playing moment? Mm -hmm. Like that moment, I'm going to come to you last, Michelle, because if you make me cry, baby. <laughs> right. We're going to end the show on that note. But what was that moment? Because somebody out there is playing with themselves. They are playing with their potential. They're t talking themselves out of every opportunity that God is throwing at them. They're, right. they're, they feel like they're not ready. They feel like they're not in position. Like, what was your girl stop playing moment that could encourage them to get out of there? I feel like yes. I've had a series of them. I feel like they are kind of like where you are on your level, right? For me now, it would be the show. Like, okay, they come to me and say, I'm gonna pay you this, and I'm gonna make you executive producer. I say no. They come back and double the deal and say, and we're still gonna give you executive producer, and I say no. They come back again and say, let me give you some time to think about it, and come back again and, you know, up the ante. And it's like, I can't play about me now. So it's always a reminder to girls stop playing with me because sometimes, you know, it's a lot easier to just be like, you know what, I'm gonna take these people check. I'm gonna go and let them do what they do, take this little money instead of spending my money, you know? To, so I, I would say for the show, for sure, like, I, oh, I never, my mom says, make a decision and stick with it. So that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't torture myself about, oh my God, did I do the right thing? Did I not? Even if it was the total wrong mistake, what I'm not gonna do is torture myself about it. Mm -hmm. So we gonna live with it, baby. And we, we gonna live it with it with a glass of wine, that's with a word. smile on our face. That I'm not part. about to do that. Yeah, so I, I would like say that. for me, with the show, mm -hmm. just like, girl, you are not about to let these people control. Lay in your face. No, can't do it. I love it. Chloe, what was your girl stop playing moment? You know, um... This is some real shit. This is not even... <laughs> this show, the irony, right? Um, I feel like I was so excited. And, you know, I was just like... I was good where I was at. You know, I was just rolling, doing the dispatching, whatever, building my business. And this opportunity, it was challenging. You know, because I do know Tiana. We have a relationship. And Casey and I... we uh, And Shanti, we had a previous relationship. I'm getting to know Sheila. She's amazing. Um... These women are, it's like, I, I was sharing with her earlier a, a manifestation manifestation journal that I had that I stated this. Like, I wanted to work with Casey. I wanted to work with Shanti. And now it's happening, you know? And I was so excited that, you know, sometimes you could fuck up your own situation by just being overly excited, and it's okay. And I was able to have my... Hey girl, moment. Stop playing, moment. Stop, yeah. playing, yeah. stop playing, moment. And you know, I talked to her. I was like, "Listen, I appreciate, I appreciate you, and I'm not here to play. I want to fix whatever problem has been had." And you know, the thing that's is, very that, mature. That's it a is. very that's mature. That's what I love about her. Grown woman, mm -hmm. I can recognize that this yeah. is Man. not how I wanted to show up. Yeah. I apologize and let me get my shit together. Yeah, easy. That's very yeah. mature. Easy. So I, acceptable. I, easy. And being accountable. People will never accountable. have a problem with that easy. either. Being accountable. Being accountable. It's very it's my new thing. It is. My girl, because sorry. Chloe's going to fuck up. We all are, though. But don't try to pretend like you didn't. But Man. Chloe's going to be that's accountable. That's the thing. Right. Chloe's going to be we accountable. Did. We all will. You know? I'm going to be accountable. And that's my, hey. I love it. That's this a girl like, stop playing this moment. This is my girl stop playing moment. Because, see, Casey's a big dog. Yeah, I'll be like, yeah. all you need to do is keep it 100 yeah. with Casey. She'll be like, but no, um, I'm like, girl, look, stop playing. But girl, stop to playing. watch her even yeah. navigate this and to get, you know, we have clients and we have people that want to get with you and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people don't succeed just because it's them. It, you're the problem. Mm. So to watch her, not necessarily like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm showing up and I'm putting, you know. I'm figuring this shit out. Yeah, but and even if she stumbles, it's like, damn, all right, I'm sorry. All right, girl, we're good. Let's move on. 
I, yeah. I love that. So watching her just navigate this is like, we, we were all crying earlier today when she did. Don't be crying Aww. over here. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of, Michelle, you're not going to make me cry with your girl stop playing, my man? I, I, no, I'm going to keep it light. I'm okay. going to keep it light, <laughs> y'all. Michelle said, I don't to tell y'all up for today. <laughs> really? <laughs> right. Well, I, I think that um, for me, it's like whispers. It's kind of like, girl, stop playing. Mm. Girl, what okay. you doing? <laughs> but when it became obvious, um, was I, so I host a live event. So with my program, so I'm a business coach and consultant, right? I help you start a profitable healthcare center, start to start to scale, right? That's my pitch. Um, so I host this live event called Lunch or Lab. And I had, when I, when I kind of first started like learning how to use Canva, right? Y'all remember when mm-hmm. Canva came <laughs> out and I'm learning how to use Canva and I'm making my flyer for my $99 course, right? Candace is my brand ambassador, blah, blah, blah. So I go into Canva and I type in like nurse oh, practitioner. I'm yeah, yeah, go ahead, be weak, babe. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I type in nurse practitioner and there's, and so I find a black woman nurse practitioner because you know that's like, okay, amen, we found a black person. P- make the flyer. Tell me why that person I connected with in real life. Oh, on the flyer? Tell me why I connected with that person in real life, not knowing that this that is- was her. Mm-hmm. And she became my brand, one of my exactly. brands. She became, she really became my PR and a brand ambassador for Lunch or Lab 2022. Mm. That's when I... that And in that moment, before then, it was like, okay, I'm doing this for my son because this is his legacy because when you have a child, you got dreams for your child and, you know, this is the dream. Like, this is the point of DJ. In that moment, that's when God showed me that one plus one don't equal two, it equals three. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about DJ. It was about the impact... For the people that I was teaching, mm-hmm. do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because like, I do, but it's just like because yeah, we teach we teach people right, and we're it's like, okay, girl, the, I'm giving the greater yeah, I'm giving ampl- you, yeah. I'm giving you the goods. Relax. I'm giving you the goods. Blah blah blah. But I don't think we really realize what we're doing for them in their life. Do you understand what I'm because saying? Because we are usually thinking about the direct thing that you're going to get from this, but yes. it's. 10 times that one thing that you're going to get. When people start showing up to see you, to when people fly to see you. <laughs> I'm when people, oh, no, it's it's together. Together. When I'm people sure. when people fly, when <laughs> people when people fly to see you, they fly to see you. They pay a they get a hotel to see you. So when when you start understanding that people are like flying across the country to see you, they're in the space and they're literally crying. I started saying that it wasn't just drug testing and it wasn't just clinical lab and it wasn't even just DJ and it wasn't even just me and my story, but it was about the people. Mm -hmm. Like, really about the people. You understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that became a louder girl stopped playing. But then last year, I actually went on a CEO sabbatical. I took myself to Turks and Caicos, which is my favorite place. And I spent some time with myself and decided how I wanted my 2023 Mm -hmm. to go based on my 2022. And it and I was just like, it's bigger. Bigger is the word. Like, and so everything has to be bigger. I don't care what I'm thinking about. It's got to be bigger for sure. Then than that. So it's like the it's one plus one equals three. And if you're not making one plus one equals three, then what you what doing? What you out here doing? Girl then girls stop playing. Then girls stop playing. Whew. Casey Cooper. What can we expect next? Man. More shows. Come on, more shows. Um. <laughs> But this time, the cast won't have my phone number. They won't be my, like, Casey. real friends. No shade. This is a job. Like this is a You going to hire. you just going to hire oh, Tyler. Man, we got to have a buffer. Her. I you mean, I love them, but it's like everybody won't You're going to be on the other shows, though? I don't know. I'm going to try. Not the other shows, no. Oh, okay, okay. No, 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 no. no. Um, just the franchises out have different cities. But, yeah, uh, the cast can't. Like, it got to be like. You've learned some lessons. What? No. Uh, yeah, just more TV and film. I mean, I set out to do this. The internet was just a tool. Like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, more TV and film. I love it. Now, I cannot let you leave without at least mentioning this turnkey. What you thought oh, I was about to... I you thought, thought you wanted me to sing. <laughs> no, Go ahead, you can do that too. It's <laughs> a joke. That, no. That about no, your turnkey uh, program. No, no. Turnkey pro- trucking program is an automated program because we get a lot of people that want to be in trucking, but they are not really built 
to have no drugs. Girl, you are not. Be- Let me just put a pause right there because <laughs> yeah. your girl get, got in and got the hell out. I got out. Was not built. Was n- I'm built for a lot. I'm just telling y'all my business a little bit. Listen. <laughs> Don't do what I did. Do what Casey does. Okay? So listen Well, here's listen the thing. Up. I was built for it. I just got tired of it. No, you are built for yeah, it. Yeah, I just I got tired of it the way you. I was. Yeah. You know, everybody's not... Trucking looks exciting when you're looking at somebody who's been doing it this long. Mm-hmm. And I figured it out. Mm-hmm. There are other people who have been doing it a long time and, you know, still, still where they are. So there are some people also who have, you know, money and they want to get into other things. You can set up your trucking company just like Uber. We talked about this before. Mm-hmm. That means you house the company... And you sign on the people to run under you, and you get a percentage of every load they carry. To me, that makes way more sense. You don't have to have a truck. You don't have to have a driver. You don't have to worry about any of that because the the, the fleet's provided for you. So that's what Turnkey Trucking is. And where can they find more? Uh, www.thecompasscircle.com. The Compass Circle on Instagram. Share your Instagram, please. Hi, and Chloe. Hi, and Chloe. At I am Sheila Michelle. And everybody's info will be linked down below. If you have not subscribed, make sure y'all do. The First Ladies of Freight drop in each and every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Also available on Roku. Thank y'all for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next episode. So if you made it this far, I just know you loved that episode. Well, what you did not know is that we recorded it right here in ATL at Elevate Studios. Yes, your girl has her own studio, y'all. And it's not just for me. I'm opening it up for you, too. So if you have a podcast, if you are a vlogger, a YouTuber, or a content creator, and you are looking for a professional studio to record your content or you want to hire me and my team to fully produce your content, make sure you check out the show notes below or log on to elevateagency.com.